Hello guys, welcome to one more video and thank you so much for visiting my channel. My name is Natasha, I am fluent in nine languages and on my channel I am sharing different language learning stories and tips. In today's video I decided to share five very interesting things about languages. Some of them I feel that some of you might know already, but some of them might be surprised even for you that are very interested in languages. So let's start. The first thing that I find very interesting, and I'm sure that all of you have heard about this, is the fact that when you're a little bit drunk or a little bit tipsy, actually, you tend to speak foreign languages way better than when you're not. Of course, I'm speaking about foreign languages that you speak. Alcohol is not gonna do a miracle and make you speak language you have never spoken. But those languages that you speak, you tend to speak them a little bit better when you are having a drink or two. This is something that I have seen uh, several studies or researches being made about or based on. And I also have my own personal experience, so I want to discuss that with you guys. According to my personal experience and according to the researches that I have read, it is actually true. Now, as we all know, alcohol is going to make you a little bit more relaxed. It also makes many people a little bit more self-confident. So, which is a great thing actually when you're speaking languages, a lot of people, even though they speak good, are struggling with self-confidence and feeling relaxed enough to speak with someone. And that's where alcohol helps. So if you're someone who is a little bit shy or a little bit uh, struggling with low self-confidence without any reason for that, then alcohol is definitely your friend when it comes to speaking languages. But I have to say that in my own experience, I have never been shy or uh, not self-confident enough to speak a foreign language. If I was, I wouldn't be able to speak nine of them. So in my case, alcohol doesn't help me with that. It doesn't help me get relaxed or become brave enough to actually go and talk to someone. No. But for some reason, which I cannot explain, I really feel that I do speak all the languages I speak better when I have a drink. A drink meaning one or to not more than that, like I have never been drunk in my life, drunk to the point where um, I don't remember what I was doing or drunk to the point where I start doing something stupid and think it's fun. I was never, I never reached that level. But I did notice that like if I have a drink and then I'm speaking in foreign language, sometimes I catch myself thinking, oh my God, I made such a good sentence and I didn't make any mistake. How is this possible? This doesn't happen when I'm not having a drink. So I have to confirm that alcohol does help you speak foreign language, maybe in a little bit more fluent and relaxed and confident way than when you're not having a drink. But please do not take this as an advice or recommendation or motivation to drink because alcohol in a long term is actually very bad for your brain and you need your brain for learning languages. So do not use this as an excuse to drink. But if you are drinking in some special occasion, maybe use it as a chance to talk in a foreign language to someone. That could be fun. Interesting fact number two for today is the fact that English language, the language that we all speak, the language that most of the people in the world learn nowadays, has more non-native speakers than native speakers. And if I am right, I think English is the only language who has this happening, where more people are learning it as second language than as their first language. And this is actually very fun uh, because I know that many people, when they're learning English, they're very concerned about their accent or they're very concerned about sounding foreign, what, whatever that means. And I know that a lot of people, when they're moving to an English speaking country and when they're talking to native speakers, they are a little bit embarrassed or they feel um, a little bit less self-confident about their speaking skills just because they sound different than native speakers. And this is very fun because according to uh, numbers, there are way more people who sound foreign or who have different accents than English native speakers. So if you're one of those people who are a little bit concerned about their accent in English and the way you pronounce things and um, the fact that you sound different than native speakers, don't worry, we are majority. So I find this very fun and I think that this is a great 
um, example for all of you guys who are struggling with your accent. Do not worry, it's fine. And I feel that accents make all of us more interesting. I love listening to different accents. I love the way different nations, different people from different backgrounds speak English. I find it so beautiful and there is definitely no reason to be ashamed or shy or not self-confident enough because of your accent. Interesting fact number three that I want to share with you today is something that concerns English. Did you guys know that USA does not have English as its official language? In fact, USA does not have an official language as a country. A lot of states uh, in the US have English as their official language, but on a country level, like whole country, they don't have official language at all. There are more than 300 languages spoken in the US and English is of course some uh, one of the probably the number one most spoken, but it's not official and US Constitution doesn't list it as official language. Uh, the reasons are complicated and historical back when um, US Constitution was written. Politicians didn't see the reason to at least any language as official one because they wanted people to be able to speak whatever language they want. So until this day, that hasn't changed. And this is something that some of you might know. I have known this for quite a long time, but, but I have met American citizens born and raised in the US who did not know this. They believe that English is official language. So it's not, but there are quite a few countries in the world that also don't have an official language. And I have to admit that I'm ashamed I didn't know about some of them. The most uh, popular second example is probably Australia. They don't have official language either, so it's not English, it's nothing. And this is something that I have also learned quite recently and I was really surprised because I grew up thinking that English is official language of Australia, but it's not. So in a case, uh, this is also new for you. I imagine you're surprised because I was surprised, but that's how things are. And then on the other hand, there are countries that have way more than one official language. South Africa, for example, has 11 official languages, which is a lot, and it shows how culturally rich that country is. But yeah, I imagine this must be a surprise. USA has no official language at all. Interesting fact number four is the fact that you can dream in foreign languages that you are learning even though you don't speak them really well. This is probably something you have heard about and from my own experience, it is really true. Uh, I'm someone who has pretty weird dreams, like weird to the point where I start questioning my mental health. And in many of them, I have heard or I have dreamed in a different language. It was never something that makes sense because my dreams really make no sense, but I know that languages were there. It was usually English, maybe because that's the language that I use the most, except for my native one. And I know that one time I did dream in Spanish, but it was not something that makes sense, but it was in my dream. Now, this is very weird and very hard to explain because psychiatrists and psychologists did not manage to explain dreams. Nobody knows why do we dream certain things that we do. Many uh, people are arguing that we usually dream things that we are uh, thinking about during the day or um, we are dreaming about things that we are stressing about during the day or uh, dreams actually reflect our desires, our fears, our current mental state and that's something that actually makes a lot of sense to me based on my dreams. So uh, to me, dreams in foreign languages are a proof how good your brain accepts new languages and I actually think it's a proof that our brain is uh, made to learn more languages even though some people claim that they can't, they're not good at it. I think you are. If you try hard enough or if you try as hard as you can, you can learn a new language and your brain is not, um, I think that every brain is able to accept a new language and to learn it and to absorb new knowledge. So in my opinion, dreaming in a language that you don't even speak that well or that's not first language to you or that you don't use every day is a proof that our brains are actually pretty smart and they can accept a new language. Definitely. Now, this is only my um, 
my own opinion doesn't mean it's true but to me that's maybe a motivation for all those people who think that their brain is not designed to learn any new language i think it is you just have to try it and the last interesting fact i want to share with you guys today is the fact that it is actually possible to forget your native language now forgetting a language or forgetting words in a new language is something that all of us polyglots are very afraid of and I think I spoke about this in a few of my videos. If you are learning a language and then you stop learning it and you don't practice it, you are definitely going to forget a lot. Not everything, it's possible to get back in shape, but you will struggle a little bit after a certain time. Now, forgetting your native language is something that sounds even more crazy because I used to believe that it's impossible, it was the first language you learned, it was the language that your parents spoke to you when you were a baby, it is something you grew up with, and I believe that our brain is processing first language uh, differently than all those other languages we learn later in life, so for a long time I didn't believe it's possible to for, like forget your native language. Unfortunately, the more uh, I talk to people and the more researches and studies I read, I learned that it is actually possible. Now, another thing that a lot of people believe is that forgetting a language usually happens if you uh, live very far away from that language or if you don't have a contact with language for 10, 15, 20 years. Well, according to studies and researches, that's not the main reason for forgetting your native language. Studies and researches have found out that what puts you at risk of forgetting your native language is the age when you got disconnected from that language. So usually all studies that I have read are listing the age of eight to nine years old as the limit. So if kid was younger than eight or nine years old when they moved to a new country and their parents stopped speaking their native language to them, that kid is very likely to forget their native language. Now, this is very individual. For some people, it's older age. For some, it's a little bit younger. I know that there are some kids who have super brains that don't allow them to forget their native language. But from people that I have met who moved from their country uh, at an early age and their parents didn't want to talk to them in their native language, usually in order for a child to fit in better into a new country, those kids really do struggle with that native language later in life. I would say that in most cases, they don't forget it completely to the point where they don't know anything, but they usually don't speak anywhere near fluent if they don't decide to learn it again. So, but in my opinion, this only happens when you're a child or probably when you are younger than eight or nine, as those researches say. But I do believe that when you are older than that, and especially if you are a grown-up person who moves to a new country, stays there for 20, 30, 40 years, and doesn't speak your native language during that time, you are not going to forget it anyway. Because at the point where you move to a new country, your, br your brain was usually developed already, you spoke your language, native language your whole life, and in that case, I think it's impossible to forget it. But I have met people who move to a new country as grown up in their 20s, even in their 30s, and then they stayed in that new country for 10 years, and then they start claiming that they're forgetting a lot of words in their native language. And um, it might be true, but I honestly have a hard time believing them. I know that some people like to pretend uh, that they're so international and, you know, world travelers who forgot their native language and now they speak new one. I personally believe that's impossible. So if you were a grown up person when you moved somewhere else, and even if you stop using your native language as much, you cannot forget it. Like, I believe there's no way. On the other hand, if you were a child and you got disconnected from your native language, it is very highly possible that you will forget most of it, which I feel it's sad, but that's what happens. That was it for today, guys. I believe that five interesting facts is perfectly enough for this video. Please let me know in the comments, did you already know all these things? And I believe that many of you did. But if you didn't, I hope you learned something new and interesting today. In a case you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, leave me a comment about pretty much anything. I would love to hear 
from you guys. I would like to get to know you more. And if you made it this far in my video, thank you so much for watching and see you next week.